All right, let's begin. Uh, so that assignment that I just gave you is due on Monday in class, uh, break even and payback analysis. The stuff that we did last time also factors into this assignment. The uh, discussion we had about breaking even between two alternatives. We're going to be talking about a different kind of break even today, but both of those go into the assignment. And then as the ongoing reminder that your project is due the day before we leave for Thanksgiving break, and that's approaching rapidly. Any questions before we get started? All right. Speaking of Thanksgiving, all right? So, hmm, what's going on here? Anybody ever done that before, got up while it's still dark and stood in line? What'd you stand in line for? You went out shopping on Black Friday. Who stood in line while it was still dark? What did you stand in line for? PlayStation? How much did you save? They had them. That was the attraction was they had stuff in stock, but it was full price. OK? Sometimes you'll take what you can get, right? Yeah. All right. I stayed in line one time. Uh, on Black Friday for, I think it was a $5 crock pot. It's like, I don't know, I just got swept up, you know? I didn't really need anything, but a small crock pot sounded pretty good, so I went for it. Um, now these people, obviously, I showed this picture to my class last year when I was over in the UAE, and they had no idea what was going on in this picture. They don't have sales that you wake up early for and, um, it was really an unfamiliar concept, but I mean, this is the sort of thing, this is sort of the Thanksgiving tradition at my house, is you go get the Sunday paper, and you start strategically planning it all out, going through the ad, and you know, like, scoffing at Circuit City back when that was a thing, because they always, their deals were always a little bit worse than Best Buy, and wondering if you've got the stomach for going over to Walmart, or whether that'd just be, like, too disgusting of a human experience to, like, it's the normal Walmart thing, but then everybody's fighting on top of it. So anyways, what attracts everybody on Black Friday, obviously, is the low, low prices, right? So let's talk about price. Price is something that retailers can set. Um, they can control that, and so we consider it as the independent variable. You can think of it as the input to the demand equation. Price is the independent variable, and demand depends on price. You know, the, the retailer can't directly force people into their stores. I mean, it's not a, a hostage situation. What they can do is they can stimulate demand by having the low prices. So demand is a dependent variable. It depends on the independent variable. So we could fill in the blank here, and I think some of you have taken economics here at Marshall or maybe in high school, and you know the most basic relationship is that if price goes up, demand will decrease or fall, and if the price decreases, demand will rise, increase. So that's when people start standing in line. Um, so we could graph that relationship, and here, this is a little bit different than how we sometimes graph things because usually what we would do was we would put the independent variable on the x-axis and the dependent variable on the y-axis. If you've done physical experimentation before, I've got some students in here in my fluid mechanics lab, for instance, what we often do would we'd put the thing that we control on the, the x-axis, like flow rate, and then whatever we're observing would go on the y-axis. But take a closer look at this. What we have is the price on the vertical axis, and so the price is the thing that we can control, and then the demand on the horizontal axis is the response to that. But you know that oddity aside, the relationship is pretty straightforward here. Uh, high price, low demand, right? Low price, big demand. This, just for simplicity, is showing a linear relationship it's probably never the case that it would actually be a linear relationship. But just for now, let's assume that this curve is flat. And we'll introduce a couple of terms here. 
when we think graphically. Okay, first of all, we can fi find an equation that describes the price at any particular level of demand. And so we want to have an equation that says, for a certain demand, what price should we set? And I guess maybe that's the reasonable way for us to think about it is, if we know we have to sell a certain number of units in order to uh, keep the factory going, what price should we set in order to achieve that demand? So here, this is relating price and demand. And you'll notice that there are a couple of uh, other variables thrown in here. First of all, A. If we take this curve and we intersect the vertical axis, what you should think of there is, what price would we have to set so that no one is going to buy even a single unit? What's like the threshold cutoff price where there's no demand? So for a PlayStation, maybe that would be, what, $1,000? No one would buy a PlayStation. Everyone would just get, maybe the real fanboys would still go for a PlayStation. But for everything, there's a certain price where you'll have zero demand. So that's what A is. <clears throat> now B is a little more complicated. B is the slope of this line. And what it represents is when you are uh, decreasing the price, how much additional demand is there? And so it's the relationship for a unit decrease in price. So if you reduce the PlayStation by $1, how many more people are now going to purchase the PlayStation that, you know, for $3.99, no way. But for $3.98, OK, yes. All right, how many more people is that? So that is B. It's the slope of the line. <clears throat> so we can um, take those same variables and do some interesting things with them. We can try and calculate how much money our company is going to be receiving by multiplying the price that we sell the item for and the number of units sold. So P times D is simply the price that you're selling your product for and how many you're selling. And so then that gives you the total revenue. Revenue we have to know because ultimately we want to calculate profitability. And as we've discussed before, revenue is one of the key components of determining whether a business is profitable. Any questions so far? So far, really obvious, right? If you want to find out how much money your company is getting, you multiply how much you're selling by the price that you're getting per unit. So we had an equation on the previous slide for price. You know, remember price is that cutoff point, A, subtracting B, which is the reduction of uh, cost how much additional demand we get, and then multiplying that by D, which is the number of units sold. So we substitute P into the total revenue formula, and then we get this formula here at the bottom. So total revenue is A, which is the cutoff times demand, minus B, which is the slope, times demand squared. It's just a simple substitution to get that formula at the bottom. We can calculate the revenue <laughs> either in one step with this formula, or you could calculate the revenue in two steps. You could first of all say, for a certain demand, what is my price? And then, for that price, what is my revenue? It doesn't really matter if you do the substitution, but you can. All right, so here's a curve that's kind of interesting. And at first, it's a little counterintuitive. It says that if you start selling more and more units as your demand increases, there's actually a point at which your revenue is going to be declining. So think about that. If you're selling lots and lots of things, how is it that your revenue could actually be going down? Because there's this maximum point, but then the revenue is getting lower if you sell even more. So how can we explain that, the decrease in revenue? Yes. OK? Well, it's, everybody's still buying all of them. So it's not, it's not that demand went down. But he's on to the right idea. His idea was, think about how did you get that demand? How did you make people buy your product? What's the thing that we can control to make people buy our product? Price. 
So the way that we stimulated demand is we had a low price. And how do you calculate revenue? It's the price multiplied by the number of items that are sold. And so what we were doing essentially is we were lowering the price to stimulate demand and our revenue declined because even though demand was going up, we were decreasing the price faster than the demand was going up to stimulate that additional demand. So it doesn't matter what the product is, there is a formula we can use. This is the, called D hat. That little symbol on the top of the D we'll call D hat. You can find out the maximum revenue by taking A, which is the intercept of the price line, you know, where it's the, uh, it is the point at which we have no demand for the product. So that's A divided by 2B, where B was the slope of our price line. Does everybody understand why revenue is falling after that maximum revenue? Because that's like a golden opportunity for a concept question on an exam. Things like explain this curve. And what you'd need to explain is you need to explain that the way you got a high demand was very low prices. And when you kept lowering your prices, even though demand was going up, you're decreasing the amount of money you're making because of the uh, decreased prices. OK. Now remember, in the last class, we talked about cost and how it has two components. It's got the fixed costs and the variable costs. What sorts of things go into fixed costs? Do you remember how we broke the uh, different types of expenses into those two categories? What kind of a business expense counts as a fixed cost? Initial cost of what? OK. Now, it depends on materials. If it's the types of materials that we're actually using to make the item, like Twinkies, for instance, like the sugar and the packaging, those are variable costs. But if we're talking about the initial costs of the equipment, it doesn't matter if we're making zero Twinkies or 100 Twinkies a minute, that factory equipment has the same fixed cost. So there are certain things that are unaffected by our level of productivity, and those are the fixed costs. And then there are other expenses that are affected by our level of productivity. So what about rent? What category does rent go into? Fixed or variable? Fixed, right. Because your landlord isn't going to give you a discount because you made fewer Twinkies today. The, the rent is the same, regardless of how busy your workers are. What about labor costs, the, the people that you pay at the factory? Are those fixed or variable? Variable, that's right. Occasionally, um, like administrators or supervisors will be on a salary, and so then that's fixed. It doesn't matter whether they sell a lot or a little, the salary is fixed. But normally, the, the labor costs are variable for the people who are there on an hourly basis. OK, now, in today's context, the variable costs we're going to think of as the, the overall variable costs here. C sub V is talking about your company's overall variable costs are the variable cost per unit multiplied by demand, which is the number of items sold. How much sugar, flour, and oil do you think goes into a Twinkie? Like, I mean, if you buy a Twinkie, maybe you're paying 40 cents. But like, how much does it actually cost the factory to make that stuff? What would you guess? Probably less than a cent. Because they're getting such a huge discount on sugar and plastic and uh, whatever stuff goes into that, preservatives, assumably, presumably a lot of preservatives. So the variable cost per unit is you're talking about just one item that's being sold. So in a mobile phone. You know, sometimes they'll tear down the newest iPhone and they'll identify what processor is in that, how much RAM. They'll add everything up because they know how much Foxconn is charging for components. And they'll say, well, the, the cost for this iPhone is like $85. And then it's being sold for 800 something, you know. So variable cost per unit is looking at just one individual item. But then capital C sub V here is the total variable costs that a company experiences when they're making, say, 10,000 items or 20,000 items. So here's profit, revenue minus costs. 
If you cover your costs, anything else you earn is profit. That's a pretty simple formula, right? Now, what we can do is we can find out the optimal level of demand. And this is a different formula than d hat. d hat was maximum revenue. But what this is, is it's optimal demand. So let me ask you, why do you suppose that it's not in our best interests to maximize the revenue? What this is saying is actually maximizing revenue is different from maximizing or for find, from finding the optimal demand. So if you're in a company, what do you want to do? What's your main objective in a, in a company, a privately owned company? Make money. So maximize profits. Maximizing profits and maximizing uh, revenue is not always the same thing. We'll look at a graphical example of that in just a bit, that actually profits and revenue are different. So here's the formula for optimal demand, D star, and then break-even points, D prime, tell us the range of profitable demand. I'll come back to this formula in just a moment. I want to show you this. This figure is really important. There's so many great ideas that go into this figure. Okay, first of all, this horizontal blue line is the fixed costs. Meaning these are the things that uh, don't change as a function of how productive our business is. On the uh, horizontal axis is volume, meaning the number of units that we make and sell. On the vertical axis is just money, amount. Okay, so fixed cost and then total cost includes fixed plus what? Variable. So total costs are the sum of the variable costs and the fixed costs. And so what we'll notice is that the total cost keeps getting further and further apart from the fixed cost line because the more items we make, the larger our variable costs are. So that makes sense that the total line is getting higher. Okay, we've seen this parabolic curve before when we were looking at the graph for revenue. Why is it that the, uh, the revenue keeps getting lower after a certain point? Why is it that the revenue line is going down? The price is too low. Yeah, we were stimulating demand by slashing prices. Now, the, the uh, above the cost line, profit, remember, is revenue minus cost. And so D prime 1 is the first number of items that we can make and sell and have a break even. Because if we sell less than D prime 1, that means that we have more cost than revenue. And if you have more cost than revenue, you're not going to be in business for very long. Look at D prime 2. So why is that the, the second break-even point? Well, because that's the point at which our costs are high, but our revenue is going down. And so once again, we're at a certain point where if we sell more than D prime 2, that's the point at which we have lowered prices so much to stimulate demand that actually we can't cover our costs any longer because the revenue is less than the costs. Okay, so. Here's the most important point of this figure. Maximum revenue is not the same as optimal demand. So think about the length of this line. Let me see if I can draw here. All right. Here's our, this line is the uh, max revenue. Whatever this demand is, it's a certain number of items. So why don't we want to sell that many items? Why is it better to sell D star instead of this D hat? Well, it's because the profit line is bigger. If we were to measure this line, like number of pixels, that's going to be shorter than this line. And this, our profit, we want to be as far away from the uh, cost line as possible. So if we uh, think about it graphically, look at the slope of these two lines. 
Um, look at what's happening with the slope, because when we are here, for example, the two lines are still getting further apart, right? Because the slope of the line is that way, this slope is that way. And so they're still getting apart, we should sell more. But then here, the slope of the line is equal to the slope of the line there, which means they're as far apart as they're going to get. So we've maximized the profit. And if we sell more of them, now that profit line is getting closer together to the cost line. So graphically speaking, what we want to do is we want to find the point at which we have maximized our profit. Any questions about that? So the formula for the break-even points is given there. Here's the formula for optimal demand, D star. Okay, this is the in-class exercise I have for you today. You're in a company that produces an electronic timing switch. You've got fixed costs and variable costs. And then the marketing department has gone and done some research and they know the relationship between price and demand. So I'd like you to calculate optimal demand maximum profits, break-even points, and then to draw the curve. The curve I want you to draw should look like this. So sketch this curve once you've solved the A through C, and then label the points with the numbers you calculated earlier on. Okay, so I'm going to, uh, when I hand out this in-class exercise, leave this slide up because this slide has the formulas you need. So you won't need your computer quite yet. Uh, after we do these paper calculations, then I'm going to show you how to make a graph like, like we've just seen. We'll, uh, we'll do a graphical solution for the same thing. In case you're struggling to interpret what the variable assignments should be, the fixed costs here, C sub F, the overall fixed cost is 73,000. The variable cost per unit um, is 83. Now you'll notice here I'm calling it C sub V. That means the variable cost per unit, that's a lowercase C sub V. The variable uh, is a little bit different in your book than in a previous book that I used. So, um, what you should have is V is $83. And then A, which is the intercept for the price versus demand curve, where it intercepts the y-axis, A is 180, and then B is 0 0.02. So those are the four variables that you'll need to uh, calculate, for instance, the uh, optimal demand. And optimal demand is a number of units. It's not a price. It's how many should be made in order to maximize profit. There's two different ways to do the max profit. Um, the approach that I used was I used this uh, formula for total revenue and total costs. 
I, as I was looking around, it seemed like most people were taking the other route, which is fine. Uh, most people, what they were doing is they were saying, for this optimal demand, which you found in part A, you find out what is the price by substituting D into this formula and then multiplying the price times demand. And so then that would tell you the revenue. So you, you calculate the revenue, you find the costs, and the difference between them is the profit, the maximum profit this company can make. And then the break-even, that formula is a little bit uh, hairy there just because it's got so many pieces to it. Okay, I asked you to do a little sketch, and uh, my sketch is pretty small and pretty crude, but it's just illustrating that we have a cost line, a revenue curve, they intersect at two points, and those are our break-even points of 392, oh, I wrote that wrong, 932, and 20. Uh, optimal demand is uh, 2425, and then the second break-even point is 39.18. Um, here's how we can do it with Excel. We're going to create a spreadsheet that has columns that we can calculate based on the given data. All right, so we're going to have I'm not sure what's going on with the screen right now. The smart board is stymieing me. All right. So we're going to have demand. Price. Revenue. Cost. And profit. Demand, I'm just going to have some guess values of what the demand might be, like 0, 10, 100, 200, and so on. Okay, so the price function, remember, is um, 180 from the problem statement minus 0 0.02 times demand. Okay, so this is the price that I should set in order to have certain amounts of demand. Revenue is simply going to be the price times the demand. Okay. Cost, uh, what we know about the cost is that it's, um, the total costs are, um, 73,000, so I'm going to put negative 73,000, those are our fixed costs, minus $83 times however many units are sold. Okay, so then that gives us the, the total costs for certain levels of productivity. And then what should I do for profit? What's the formula for profit? Revenue minus costs, that's right. So revenue minus cost. Actually, since I have these uh, negatives here, uh, I should do revenue plus cost because I made costs negative there. So I'm not profitable yet. You know, just to uh, simplify things, I'm going to make the costs as positive values. That makes more sense, I think. All right, so then the profit is uh, revenue minus cost, just as we said initially. So if we want to have a graph, we're going to have to choose a variety of points just so that the, uh, the range of possibilities is included. So I'm just doing, to check on what we found before, that it's around... Uh, 
What was our other break-even point? 39, 18, I'll do 4,500, and so on. So you're just picking some values, and then what we can do is we can look at the numbers here. It does look like we're pretty close to the break-even point, you know, if we're rounding off. And we can insert a graph. So I'm going to insert a, a chart that has the actual points shown. Hmm, it's doing this weird smart board thing again. Okay. So I'm going to uh, select the data for that. And I want to have one of my series be for a certain level of demand on the x-axis. I want to show the costs. Okay, I'm going to call this one cost. I want to add another one that has demand on this axis and another one that is revenue. And then I'm going to add a third one that is profit. And so again, for the x-axis, we just have our demand, and then here is the profit. Now, for scaling, it's going to start showing negative ranges here. Um, so I'm going to force it to, I'm going to force it to um, have zero as my starting point instead of going into the negative range. And then zoom out so we can see what that looks like. Um, format axis zero. Also here I want zero to be. Okay, so that's kind of what we saw. And we can smooth that curve out by adding more points or choosing different points, but the trend is essentially the same as this theory graph here where it's showing that the profit distance is the distance between the revenue and the costs. And um, so if you want to hang on to this, I think you'll find it useful in the homework assignment that's due coming up. But let's just take one last look at these announcements here that well, the screen has a mind of its own. I better just quit while I'm ahead. I'll see you in class on Friday. Have a good one.